The Bible says in Ephesians 6 verse 12 that For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Many things that we see here on earth and things that happen are not just ordinary. The truth is that many of these things are beyond the physical. Not everyone can see this because not everyone's eyes are being opened to see in the spirit realm. Elisha and his servant were surrounded by soldiers. Elisha's servant couldn't see what Elisha was seeing. He couldn't see in the spiritual realm. And then Elisha prayed, 2 Kings verse 17. And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. After God opened his eyes, he saw that God is handling the situation already. I pray that every situation that is causing problems for us, God will take care of them for us. We cannot fight these battles ourselves. We must allow God to do his work. We must surrender everything to him. The spiritual warfare is greater than what we think we can handle. It is only God who can handle them. Why should we be running everywhere because we are being troubled? Why should we stress ourselves because the devil is attacking us? The Bible says in Exodus 14 verse 14 that the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. You will never have to worry about the battles, because the Lord will handle them for you. What we need in this life is the ability to see beyond the physical. What we are facing in this life is not natural. They are breathed or inspired by the dark forces. Ephesians 6 verse 12 is telling us to redirect our prayer to change our target. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood, according to the scriptures, mean man. Man is not the problem. They are easy to deal with. The actions of man are always inspired by a spirit. That spirit is what we should focus on, not the man. The man is just a distraction. The fight, the Christian fight, which is the real fight, is against the forces that are hidden in the dark to make Christians fool. Fighting these powers, these rulers and the forces, we need a power that is above all of them. There is no way that these powers will not strike at any point in our lives. We can't avoid them, but we can be sure that the Lord will fight them for us. They might be strong. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. What then is this message telling us to do? It means we must cast our cares on the Lord. Psalm 55 verse 22 Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. This should be happy news to us. We have problems and things bothering us. Imagine the debt we are in. Someone comes in and promises to pay them. Not only making promises, but help in paying the debt. We will be happy that someone could take the burden on himself and clear the debt. In this same manner, Jesus came in and told us to come to him with our burden. This is something we don't hear from people. It will surely make us happy. In Matthew 11 verse 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The promise of Jesus is not one that will fail in any way. We have things bothering us. Some things are giving us concern and making us worry. The psalmist says, Cast your cares upon the Lord. Our cares, the things that we care about, the things we are afraid of losing, the things that we are in desperate need of. 
and the disturbing situations we find ourselves in. Our care is very, and it is unlimited. All these things are what we need to take to God. It is already written that we shouldn't worry too much. It is not ours to worry. We should just tell God everything, and then He takes over. Matthew 6 verse 34 Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We can stop worrying about tomorrow, or what will happen tomorrow, only if we cast our cares on the Lord. God is sustaining us in different ways. God could sustain us spiritually or physically. There are battles that we fight in this life. They are not physical. This is when we need God to sustain us spiritually. We need the power to face the dark forces that want to bring us down, that want to fail in this Christian journey. These battles could make us worry. What makes us worry is the outcomes of the battle. They manifest in the physical. If God has promised that He will sustain us, then why do we have to worry about overcoming these battles? Why do we have to worry about becoming a victor when God has declared us a victor already? Leave the situation for God to handle. Exodus 14 verse 14 The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. There are things that we are battling in our lives right now. What we believe is that we can overcome these situations. We are being faced with overwhelming challenges, challenges that are making us think of giving up. There are some things we should never stress ourselves over. There are some things that are not ours to sort out. There are some things that we need to look at and pass to who has the power to take care of them for us. People are trying to pull you down. They are planning everything they can just to make sure you don't make it in life and you are crying. You are trying your best to defeat them. This is not what you should be sad about. This is not your battle. It is the Lord's battle. Anyone who challenges you is challenging God. Paul was a man of God who performed a lot of miracles. People knew Paul to be a powerful man by the grace of God. He wrote letters and preached the word of God, but some people were not happy about him. This is to let you know that no matter how good and perfect you are, no matter how good you have been to the people around you, there are people who will always wish bad on you. These people hated Paul so much that they wished him dead. Acts 23 verses 12 to 13 and when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than forty which had made this conspiracy. There are some battles that you should leave alone for God to take care of for you. You feel like everything is not going well for you, the Lord will take care of everything for you. Why should we bother ourselves over the things that God can handle for us? This is the time for us to stop stressing ourselves over the things that God has already taken care of or things that God will take care of for us. It doesn't matter how tough the situation is. God will handle it for you. It doesn't matter how great your enemies are. Just go to God in prayer, and He will deal with them for you. The first thing that God has taken care of is the guilt of sin, the reward of sin, which is death. Don't be bothered about how great your sin is. When you come to Christ, He will wash you clean. John 15 verse 13 Greater love has no one than this, 
to lay down one's life for one's friends. Every time we say the three popular words, I love you, it is very easy to chant. Anyone could say it any time. As it's been said that it is lust until the time of sacrifice comes. How many people will be ready to sacrifice anything to help their loved ones? This is what Jesus was telling his disciples, and not just them, but us too. The verse that precedes 13 says, My command is this, Love each other as I have loved you. It's a simple command. Love others as Jesus loved you. How did Jesus love you? What did he do to show his love for you? Romans 5 verse 8 But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus had to die for us to show how much he loved us. There is no love greater than this. There are things that we need to know about the love of God. When you were being beaten down, when you were being rejected, the love of God found you. What people call love is not exactly love, but lust. Lust could make a sacrifice too. Some people would do anything for someone just to get what they have lusted over. When it comes to love, you don't care what you gain or not. When Jesus was telling us to love others, he was telling us to love without any form of expectancy. When you make a mistake, don't make the situation bring you down, but just go to God and let him handle it for you. Ask for forgiveness always, and he will take care of the rest. The second thing we need to know is that we cannot fight the spiritual warfare ourselves. We must allow God to handle every battle of our lives.